I'm Liron Cohen. And I'm Mimi Torchin. And you're listening to Lady Parts TV, the podcast. Whee! to remind Mimi that she's here too. Yeah, I was looking out the window <laughs> how pretty the trees looked. Hi everybody, welcome back to our podcast. We're sorry we skipped last week, but you know, again, I just find this pandemic very distracting and I also find Marta Dusseldorp very distracting. Yeah, I think we both have found her extremely, and it's not like she's new to us. No, but we just like rediscovered her since uh, a, place a Place to, to call, call home. home and we actually rewatched all of Janet King after watching all of Cronies. And so. I didn't remember hardly any of it. So. Yeah, and now we're, now she's going to be on Winforth. So yes, yay, I yay, can't yay. wait. What a thrill. I was such a smart move on such their part. Such a smart move. Um, anyway, so we, we watched a lot of that, but we do have a lot of new things to tell you about mm-hmm. this week, we promised. And uh, because we watched a lot of old shows, which we don't count for our tally, we only have nine shows in our stats today, but we have good stats. Excellent. Five written or co-written by women, which is 55%, and seven directed, which Amazing. is 78%. So yay us. Well, we watched a couple um, of the bold types. Those yeah, that helps. Usually, yeah, mm-hmm. By the way, that was a dog. I don't know if you could hear that. By the way, um, oh, do we have wolves on the island? (laughs) Just just me by my mother's surname. Um, Is that Mimi Nay Wolf? Is that (laughs) Mimi Torture Nay? You always ask. Was I raised by wolves? And I you say were. partially, Yeah, yes. that explains a lot. Um, we do have the ballot ready for you all to vote on the Lady Parts TV Awards. Some very exciting nominations, if we may say so ourselves. We may, why not? We may. <laughs> They're exciting to us. Um, so go ahead, uh, go to the website, ladypartstv.com. Pick up your ballot. It's right there on the screen when you when you open the website. Just give it a second and it will pop up and give you a link. And uh, we want as many of you to vo- vote as possible. Uh, the voting is open until August 10th. Now, starting with a new series, a new Australian series. Uh, can I just interrupt you and say <laughs> that I don't think anything we've watched, although we've watched so many fantastic things, and I'm watching a show I'll tell you about next week that's old, but nothing is as fascinating as Mary Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Well, reality TV, you just yes. made the case for reality TV. But that's real reality. <laughs> that's true. No, it's not, not, that not directed reality she's or scripted. saying that uh, is not clearly obvious. It is uh, validating. It's, just yes. validating mm-hmm. from, yeah, from somebody who she's is also brave. a clinical psychologist. Mm-hmm. Um, the Secrets She Keeps is a new Australian show that premiered on Sundance Now, uh, Thursday, uh, July 16th. Um, and it's based on a novel by Michael Robotham. Mm. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Starring He's probably not listening, so it's okay. <laughs> starring not uh, Australian but British Laura Carmichael. You might remember her as Edith from Downton Abbey. Poor Edith. Poor Edith. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jessica de Goy Go- De Gau, Gau, I think. Okay. G O U W. And for those of you who are fans of A Place to Call Home, and if you're not fans, you should watch our vlog and immediately after binge A Place to Call Home. Uh, Jenny Baird is also mm-hmm. in at least half the episodes. Um, honestly, I'm gonna. This is gonna be a mixed review because it, uh, objectively speaking, this seems like a good show. Um, very well acted. Um, and, but subjectively, from my very personal perspective, I hate this kind of story. And the story is Me too. two, yeah, two pre- uh, pregnant women uh, actually uh, about to give birth uh, have a chance encounter at a supermarket. A chance, you know, chance in quotation marks. A chance encounter in a supermarket. One is uh, very has a very different life from the other. Uh, I don't Laura- know how they haven't met before. By the way, it's her. It's. Uh- just to get the guys I think local they just, supermarket. I think she just, oh, she moved, just there moved there recently. Okay. Um, Laura Carmichael is um, a grocery clerk mm-hmm. and uh, living a very kind of, you know, blah life. Uh, her boyfriend broke up with her. She's obviously extremely clingy and psychologically compromised. Uh, whereas uh, the other one is, uh, this is uh, their surprise baby. They didn't mean to have another baby. She's in a marriage that seems stable um and she's a blogger a successful and blogger her husband's a sportscaster of some kind so um they each have secrets that they're they're 
colli- collision uh, of lives will uh, unveil. Now, I can just tell you, I'm not going to tell you too much because you know, I mean, you're going to guess it from the very first second, but uh, to me, the kind of what whichever version it takes on the stalker story the person who is completely obsessed obsessed with another person who is so delirious and so um determined to take over the other person's life that story to me is a story that i never enjoy watching and even if it's done well uh i just I, i'm just like anxious from the first second and i just don't enjoy going through the experience so to me i i don't like this uh, I, I I don't know if I'm gonna watch more than the two that we watched. Well, I uh, I, I feel the same way in general about these kinds of storylines, especially the, the this particular version yes. of it. Um, but I'm interested. I'm intrigued. I want to see where it's going. I want to see what's going to happen because both of the characters are, uh, you know, neither of them are pure. Of uh, nobody is. No, that's true. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think the acting is very good. Yes. It's um, very well written. Laura Carmichael is so creepy. I just, I just you know, again, <laughs> poor, poor Edith. Edith. She just, I think there's something about her affect in her face that just sort of dooms her to play these I kind of I guess that's why they imported losers. her from Britain to play uh, in this Australia Although she show. did, uh, you know, come into her own finally in Downton Abbey. But there's just something about her that I just don't really like very much. And that works very well in this this show, which I think I will try to watch myself, Maybe although I'll I'm try watching another so many one, but I'm not, by myself. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not as as excited about watching another one. If I do, I'll force myself so I can see where it's going. Um, but again, good cast, um, excellent cast, for well you, written, well done. If you don't mind this kind of a story, and you'll know exactly what we're talking about as soon as you start um, watching. Yeah. Then, um, then go for it. Go for it. Uh, the secrets she keeps again. It's on Sundance now. Started already started. So uh, check it out. Yeah, now in a completely different vein. Um, Little voice, uh, which is uh, created by Sarah Bareilles and Jesse Nelson. Oh, I think by the way, also partnered with her on, on Waitress. Uh, Waitress. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so good and combo. Uh, premiered already on Apple TV Plus on July tenth. And it stars this adorable Brittany O'Grady, who I really don't know very well, and a bunch of other people that I don't know, but some very cute guys. Some uh, uh, She's young. And it's, uh, first of all, you had me at Sarah Bareilles. <laughs> Sarah Bareilles, to me, is a goddess. Um, I just, I love her essence. I love everything about her. Her music just speaks to me. It's uh, she. She's to me like the new generation's Carly Simon, like Carly Simon was to me when I was young. Um, she is the young, slightly younger generation. I mean, she's... What I love about Sarah Burrells, and we just spoke about it yesterday, is that besides being a fantastic songwriter, she has, she's a double whammy. Well, she's a more than a double whammy. Way more. But because many songwriters... Are not singer, as good songwriters. Yeah, many singer, maybe ma- many good songwriters are not good singers, and she is a fantastic, fantastic singer. Fantastic singer. So she's and got then it she all. goes and writes a musical, right. and then she goes and Does scores it, a TV show. Uh, so. Writes a TV show and scores it. Right. Um, so she is. She's the real. The music is wonderful. It's Sarah Bareilles' music. It's uh, the girl is in her early twenties. She wants to break into the music to be music scene i have a feeling it's semi-autobiographical i'm sure it is. <laughs> uh if you love new york that's all you need to love you don't even need to love sarah Bareilles, which everybody does who everybody does uh the, the way new york is shot the way it's captured it it just reminds me of it, it doesn't remind me totally of my youth because i came to new york at the end of the 60s and the early 70s when new york was just one big pile of graffiti and dog shit because they didn't have the scoop law this the scoop law yet and uh but it still was mecca and the the city looks so beautiful it's so new york it's filled with street performers and subway performers and um it, it, it the what the milieu is just divine and everybody in it i like um, and I just the, want to say about New York yes. that especially now it's so oh. it's so bittersweet because we love seeing it and at the same time we know that New York right now is not New not York. Not New York. It's you know. So it's very it's very. I miss it so much. I miss it down to my essence. But the only thing that makes it possible is I'm in a 
absolutely gorgeous place, and New York isn't New York. Right, knowing that even you being know, there I'd would be not... in my apartment, so yeah, yeah, you know, right. I might as well be in my house where I have some yard. But I really, really enjoyed this. Um, and it's light. It's very light fare. Oh, yes, yes. So, uh, it, and I think it's half-hour episodes. Yes, which makes it easy to watch. Yeah. It's a great thing when you say, oh, uh, I don't know if I have a whole show in me right now. <laughs> this is the show to fill it with because um, you will enjoy it so much. You will like everybody just hearing the music. And, and an interesting story about, uh, at least I found it interesting, about this, the title and the song, Little Voice. This was one of the first songs Sarah wrote, and she wanted to put it in her first album. And uh, the producers, the label didn't think it was interesting, that it was good enough. So it's been sort of sitting somewhere, you know, in a drawer uh, until now, when she decided to build a TV show. Well, no, it. actually, she didn't decide to build a TV show. They had the TV show, right, right. and then they were looking for a theme song, and she started writing, and she didn't like what she was writing, and then she remembered, she remembered that she it, had right. this. But what's interesting is that the song, the story about the song, encapsulates the idea behind the show, which right. is that this girl is trying to find her own voice. In you know, it, it's hard both it specifically is. in the music industry, but in general in life, it's yes. hard to find your voice and, and be true to yourself, especially when you constantly need approval in order to get ahead. And so. it's a wonderful song. What could they have been thinking of? Well, okay. wh- whoever knows what they think exactly. About. So uh, anyway, is- so Little Voice, uh, Apple TV Plus, created uh, and music written by Sarah Bareilles. I I couldn't recommend it more highly. It's just delightful. All right, now to a movie that. Um, I had to kind of find excuses as to why we should review it. (laughs) Um, And it did say that it had to do with women. It didn't turn out to have that much to do with women, not enough for our uh, our purposes, but still it was uh, good enough for us to review anyway. It's called The Tobacconist, and uh, it opened in select cities uh, July 10th, but also on virtual cinemas again, Kino Marquee, K-I-N-O Marquee.com. You can go and purchase uh, quite a few movies. They're so brilliant. They just... Just yes. are releasing all these movies both in theaters. Well, whoever still has, whatever city still have few theaters working, and uh, virtual cinema at the same time. And, uh, and it's we've a, enjoyed them all. I think that we've seen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm not sure if the production is uh, German or Austrian, but it's shot in both, mm-hmm. um, and uh, directed by Nikolaus Leitner and co-directed by him and uh, Klaus Richter. And it's based on actually uh, an international bestseller by Robert. Sit Holler, um, starring... Uh, Seath Holler, I think. Mm, yeah, well, again, I'm going to butcher some names. Sorry. Simon Morris, Bruno Ganz, uh, Jans Krish, Kirsch, Yo- Johannes, Johannes Kirsch, 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 Emma Dragunova, and Regina Fritsch. Now that I got that out of the way... And they were all wonderful. They were all wonderful, but let me start with the character that's most wonderful in this film, and this is the the the, 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 the view. The just the, it's, it's stunning. It's to look at. It's, it's, it's... I don't know. First of all... The lake district where... It, this, the lake yeah. that he grows up on. It, it's, it's, it's a so combination of gorgeous places, but also the way that they shot oh, the it. Lighting, the, the lighting. The lighting, the use of colors, the set decor. Mm. It's just, it, was, it was stunning to watch. Yes. So that's the first every, thing. Every frame yeah. is a visual treat. Yes. Even the tobacco stuff. <laughs> every, it's all its little surprises and nooks and crannies. And this is uh, somewhere in the mid to late 30s. Um, uh, a young man in Germany. His mother sends him to Austria to work at a tobacconist shop right as Hitler uh, rises to power Mm -hmm. and uh, also annexes Austria. And um, the reason that I thought we could sort of talk about it is because the the description said that the, the, the boy who works at the tobacconist shop, he meets Sigmund Freud, who is a customer, and he starts asking him about, he tries to make him understand women. This is a very small part of the film, the part about the women. Um, Anishka, who's played by Emma well, Drogonova. I think that she has quite a bit to do with it. She does, but the whole idea of trying to understand women is really not that. No, it really no, it's isn't. mostly about... They do talk about that. They do, though, but, I, but it's mostly about Hitler's rise to power and how and it this- affects... Everybody's life, yes, uh, and and this boy's coming of age. This is a true exactly. coming of age. It's story. a true, co- but it's so Subtle tender, and tender. It's and so it doesn't hit you over the head with anything. Mm-mm. It in fact, it's so tender and gentle, and it really, really asks you to be the sophisticated viewer and see both this man's journey 
and uh, understand what's going on. And, and it He's all lovely that boy. And it all lies on the assumption that you know what's going to happen because you know what's going to happen. Then everything that happens in this movie takes on a completely of different course, meaning. A dark cloud hangs over the whole. No, as gorgeous and buoyant looking as this film is. There's that dark cloud that you know is coming. And, you know, because it looks so beautiful and because uh, the people are so wonderful, I mean, the actors are wonderful, but the characters mm-hmm. are so... Uh, I have to say, from the very first few min- minutes, I said, I'm going to enjoy this film. Because, you know, there are movies that we just talked about, The Secrets She Keeps. There are things that I know are good, but I don't actually enjoy sitting and spending an hour or however long just in the company of these people. And I just knew that I was going to enjoy spending an hour and a half or two hours with these people, knowing all the terrible things that, you know, are looming. Bruno Gantz um, is wonderful as Freud. Freud was much nicer than I thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> I have my issues with Freud, but his contribution to society, you know, yes, kind, of, and, kind of indisputable. And certainly to the film. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's a really, really beautiful film. Beautiful. We highly In recommend every way. it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, everything that has to do with World War II has uh, already got a head start with me. So this is called The Tobacconist. Uh, it's on virtual cinema, kinomarquee.com now. We highly recommend that you watch it. Now, if it really couldn't be more, now, like, out of the for way. something completely, <laughs> completely different. Completely different. Just completely changed gears here for a second. I shouldn't have we put them. We almost have to go change I really clothes shouldn't and have. Uh, put on a different hat. And uh. <laughs> I just want you to know we are not wearing hats no, to do this No, we are podcast. not wearing hats. But I, I shouldn't have really put them one after the other now that I think about it. Though, what can you put after a Nazi movie? Um, another Nazi another movie. Another Nazi movie. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, recently we found on Amazon Prime Video... Um, a, a, a stand. We love stand up. We love yes. we love female comics. We love stand up, and we are always excited when we find somebody new that we love, and or this, that we might love. Y- yes, and this is Cameron Esposito. And apparently, this actually when we, when I looked it up, it turned out that this this particular stand up special was from 2016. It's called Marriage Material. I don't know if they just now put it up or if they just now recommended it to me, and I and I saw it. But this chick. Is so brilliant. She's so gay, by the she's way. She's so gay. Uh, so gay. She's very cute. Uh, except that hair, first of all, the haircut drove me crazy. I could not <laughs> focus on anything but this haircut, which I really hated. Uh, but nevertheless, she got through to me, even though I was obsessed with this haircut. I just wanted to take a scissors to you know one part of it. Well, her hair, nonetheless. Nonetheless, her, she does her talk hair, about her, her hair, hair too. Well, let me no, no no. Let me say it this way. Well. Even so, even so, <laughs> for your, those of you who are Tommy fans, you know what I mean. Um, she is so original and oh, so different from she's everything got. else. She's so brilliant. I mean, she's no Hannah Gadsby. Sure, her, she's not that original, <laughs> but she is very original and very funny. Very funny, and I like her delivery. And she has so much to say along oh, with yes. that. Most, she sneaks most, up on you. Most best comics do. Yeah, really, she sneaks up do. on you. You know. Uh, yeah, with the the morality tales <laughs> and uh yeah she's very very smart this particular stand-up i haven't seen any of uh, else any other stand-up from her but this particular one is ex- again a lot about her life as a gay person and coming out and understanding yeah, she's just about to get married this is her yeah. bachelor party Be- bachelorette yes. bachelorette party right the, right the night I, is she gonna get married the next day something like something that something like that yeah so anyway and then when i looked her up i, I found out that she also then also gone by now uh, on stars she had a reality show of her and her wife apparently her oh. her wife is also a comic and it was all about their lives as comics damn i wish we could find it well we'll, we'll look but it might just be stars on demand yeah anyway uh cameron esposito marriage material it just gives you an hour of hilarity with a little bit of with a little side about. dish of yes mm-hmm. of food for thought and she's so. cute <laughs> and she's gay so uh amazon prime definitely a uh, uh, thumbs up now, last time we talked to you, we gave you a heads up about The Old Guard, which was a new Netflix movie, and now we're back to review it, because we had conflicting reviews. My mom hated it, <laughs> and a couple of friends actually loved Liked it. it yeah. So, um, Anyway, The Old Guard, available now on Netflix, and it's directed by Gina prince uh based on um, a well-known graphic novel by Greg Rucka. And it stars, uh, for our purposes, Charlize <laughs> Theron and Kiki Lane and a lot of guys, including uh, Matthias Schoenartz, 
uh, and Chitwell Ejiofor. Ejiofor. You know, I've been watching his movies for a thousand years, and I still can never say his name. Uh, it was a lot. It was a really, really, really good movie. Uh, Sorry, it's, mom. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's about um, a for a, a group of people uh, led by Charlize who are ancients. They can't die, and they have been protecting. Um, well, they've been fighting for various been causes. fighting for various causes throughout. Uh, I, I think probably uh, dinosaur time. Uh, uh, no, not dinosaur <laughs> time, and probably after Christ. But I think someone said she met. I think Charlize met like uh, her another one of the women who did. They they can eventually die during the Crusades. Or eventually, something. They, mean, they wear uh, their their bodies wear finally, out. Finally, yes, but but they go but through take that, centuries. Centuries, sometimes. yes. Um, and she was the old. She is the oldest. Yes, but, uh, and you get little flashbacks to uh, the past, which are quite uh, fascinating. And uh, Kiki Lane is the new the new girl, uh, and um, it's really really thought provoking. And the action is very good. They are such. I mean, Charlize has really become a great action uh, heroine, and. Um, uh, it's it's got an interesting through line. You're you're about to say something. Say what you want I just, to say. Because usually I don't like things that are too unrealistic. But I think the key, and I always I've come to realize that about everything that I watch. Everything. Which if it's unrealistic, if it's sci-fi or whatever. But if they focus on the humanity of it, then we can all relate to it no matter what. Because it's all different stories, maybe take place in you know different realities, different types mm-hmm. of existences. But if we're all, if it's all about the human experience right. of it, then and we can we relate. care about the characters. Exactly. Then that's all that matters. And if the show, if the, sh- uh, the movie or the series itself treats what's happening realistically right then you can go along it's like a show I, I'm, I'm watching now which i will tell you, t- to t- next you about week. later that uh, is very very out there in many ways but it's very grounded in reality and they it's happening and you know the truth is is that sci-fi really uh has always been ahead of its time but it's always been kind of on the nose on the, on the nose but a little but ahead of its time yes that's right? what i'm saying uh, so I mean, so it's Jules not Verne, let's face exactly it, he, he he predicted a lot of so things. many things. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was I, fun. I did very, very much. Show yeah. this is wonderful. They're all wonderful. Kiki yeah. Lane is very, very good. Mm-hmm. Um, she's gonna be a big star. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think we're giving it two thumbs up. Gorgeous, right? still and fabulous. And, mm. Two thumbs up. Oh, two thumbs up, definitely. <laughs> and a pinky. <laughs> <laughs> so The Old Guard is on Netflix now. If you haven't yet watched it, though, I'm sure most of you have. I mean, it's Charlie's, let's face it. Um, and that's our podcast for the week. We have more stuff coming up, so make sure to tune in. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, go vote on the Lady Parts TV Awards. And um, what else should they do? Uh, get ready for Talking Teal, which yes. we are going to do as much as we can, free of charge. Wear a mask. Wear a mask, for sure. Don't be an idiot. Don't I be mean, an really, don't be an idiot. I think, like, that's the bottom line. I don't think be an that's idiot. a mask I want to get. It's just don't be an idiot. <laughs> Wear a fucking mask. Wear a fucking mask. And stay home, by the way. Oh, well, yeah, stay the fuck home. But if you're staying home, you don't have to wear a mask. Okay, so that's it. That's it. We've, we're done preaching. And um, email us, ladypartstv at gmail.com. Tell us how you've been doing. And we'll see you soon. Bye.